today I'm in Seoul, South Korea, where Samsung gave me an early first look at the brand new Galaxy Z Fold 5 and Z Flip 5 ahead of their summer unpacked event. So let's jump right in and see what these devices are all about. First, I'd like to point out that this video isn't a full review, but rather some initial first impressions. If you would, however, like to see more in-depth coverage, drop me a like on this video and hit that subscribe button to see when my actual review goes live. But here they are, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 and Z Flip 5. At a glance, they look pretty similar to the previous generations. Very premium feeling in the hands, and when you open them up, the hinges feel so good. But we'll get to what they improved on in just a moment. Just as Samsung did with the S23 earlier this year, the name of the game is Evolution, not Revolution. After all, they did sell 12 million foldables in 2022 alone, accounting for over 60% market share in the segment. Wow. All this to say, their current formula is clearly working, and the fifth generation of Galaxy Z is looking to refine it even more. The most obvious visual change can be found on the new Z Flip 5 with a brand new 3.4 inch outer display called Flex Window. Up from 1.9 inches last year, it essentially covers most of the lid, letting you do more stuff without having to flip the clamshell open. Not only does this allow for more personalization, but widgets from the old cover screen are simply more robust on this bigger display. Things like launching the camera app to utilize the main shooter for selfies and viewing your calendar feel less claustrophobic. Plus, there's a helpful global view to see all of your favorite widgets all in one spot. However, the real kicker here is that you're able to launch full-blown Android apps like YouTube, Google Maps, and Messenger alongside an actual keyboard to complete the entire experience. Finally. It's been 84 years. The only real caveat here is that it's technically a Samsung Labs feature, so app compatibility is not necessarily guaranteed. But regardless, this is a welcome addition to the Z Flip and more or less brings it up to speed with the newest Moto Razr. Moving right along, the Z Fold and Z Flip 5 also have upgraded hinges this year. Samsung literally closed the gap on both phones, which you can't see on the Flip but definitely will notice on the larger Z Fold. The new design not only slims their overall profile by around two millimeters and without compromising the resistance and feel while opening and closing them, but this also has positive implications for durability, reducing the likelihood of dust and debris making its way inside, which can damage the main display. That being said, both the Flip 5 and Fold 5 are rated for IPX8 water resistance just like last year. So if you are looking for a substantial improvement in durability, this generation isn't really moving the needle all that much. Something else that didn't really change all that much are the creases on these folding displays, which feel roughly the same as last gen. While this might be a bit of a buzzkill for some, at this point, I've been pretty chill with it on my personal Z Fold 4, and with the Fold 5, at the very least, the inner display is improved this year. Resolution and refresh rate are still the same, that's 2176 by 1812 at 120Hz, but the key here is brightness. Rated for 1750 nits, it is on par with the screens on the Galaxy S23, helping it perform better in harsher lighting conditions. In fact, where they were showing us the phones, there was hella bright studio lights everywhere, which didn't really help for shooting it, but I could see the screen very clearly. Access granted. Okay, so we've talked about physical design, but there are some changes under the hood as well. As expected, this year's Z Flip and Z Fold see a sizable performance jump compared to last generation, and this is thanks to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy that we saw on the S23. The 4 Galaxy part here is especially key because this is a slightly skewed variant of Qualcomm's off-the-shelf SoC 
that's slightly clogged higher for more performance. I don't have any benchmarks to show for it since this is a first impressions video. If you are curious, definitely stick around for my full review. But all is to say, you can expect the Z Fold 5 and Z Flip 5 to excel just as well as any flagship Android phone this year, and then some. As far as cameras go, there aren't any changes to note on the Z Fold 5, which is kind of a bummer. For the Z Flip 5, Samsung is showing it a tiny bit more love. While the specs on paper are more or less the same, Samsung claims that the 12 megapixel lens lets in 3x more light and has better anti-reflective coating to reduce lens flaring. It might not be the most exciting upgrade, but for the Z Flip, which typically gets the short end of the stick for cameras, any improvement is certainly a welcome one. And to round everything out, let's talk about pricing. Now, fortunately for the Z Flip 5 and Z Fold 5, we aren't seeing any increases. 999 bucks in the US is the starting price for the Z Flip with 256 gigs of base storage, which is up from 128 last year. And then there's the powerhouse itself, the Z Fold 5, which starts at 1799. Whoa. Again, no change here, but it's still an insane price point nonetheless. Again, I'll have more to unpack later in my Z Fold 5 review once I have my own unit to test out, but I'm especially looking forward to sinking my teeth into the optimizations that Samsung made with the newest version of One UI. I talk a lot about this in my videos, but ever since the Z Fold 4, I really think Samsung does software multitasking better than any other Android device manufacturer. I looked at the OnePlus pad, even the Pixel tablet for a little bit, and One UI is genuinely better than both. Hell, it might even be in some ways better than iPad OS. And ultimately, I can't wait to run it through its paces in the coming weeks. Definitely stay tuned here on Denki for follow-up content, and let me know, what do you think about the Z Fold and Z Flip 5 in the comments below? And finally, thank you so much for watching the channel and supporting the content we make here. It's because of all of you that companies like Samsung are taking notice and getting us early access to cool tech. Part of this trip to Korea was that I was able to get a tour of the company's Digital City HQ, which was pretty neat. I even got a chance to take a look at some wacky old products, like this retro oven slash TV and the goddamn Matrix phone. I'm gonna share some of this on my YouTube Shorts and my TikTok at Denki Channel, so follow me there if you want to check out some fun, low-key stuff as well. Thank you so much again, and I'll catch y'all in the next video.